Hi everyone, my name is John Dunn and I am with the AWR team at uh, Cadence Systems. I'd like to talk to you a bit today about uh, improvements in our Axiom simulator, which is a best in class EM 3D planar simulator and uh, how that has been improved in two ways. Uh, one is better integration in Cadence software. And second is just uh, new improvements to the simulator itself. So why don't we go ahead and get started. As I mentioned, AWR is now part of Cadence uh, as of uh, January of 2020. So as part of that, of course, uh, we're looking hard at how we can better integrate into the Cadence series of products for our customers in order to provide better design experience. Now, when we look at that, there's two clear areas to look at. The first is at the chip level for uh, use with Axiom. The second would be at the board package level. So if we look at the Cadence products, uh, very clearly Virtuoso is uh, for silicon chip design, uh, the industry standard solution, and Axiom now is part of that solution. We'll get into the details of that in a little bit. At the board package level, the Allegro family of products is Cadence's offering in that arena, the industry standard Allegro for PCB design, uh, and then its extensions for uh, package module type designs. And I'll show you where uh, Axiom fits into that now and uh, talk a teeny bit about our future plans there. We also have a number of improvements in V15. V15, our latest release of the software, was uh, about a month ago. That would be in June. And um, we'll get into that a little bit and how that's helped both at the chip level and the board package level. Let's go ahead and start at the chip level. Now, for integration, we are integrated into Virtuoso. And the very Virtuoso that supports Axiom is called Virtuoso RF Solution. Uh, and as part of that, what they're doing here is the Virtuoso, which is a schematic and layout environment for silicon chip design traditionally, uh, they've actually added where you can, first of all, also include boards and packaging. So think flip chip kinds of simulations. Uh, they also have added a number of EM simulators, and Axiom is one of those. Uh, in addition to Axiom, uh, they have a finite element simulator called Clarity that they added. And so at Cadence, we now actually have two EM simulators. We have Clarity, and we also still are supporting our analyst product. So getting back to Axiom, the way it works in Virtuoso is you start with your schematic on the left here, and this is actually a voltage-controlled oscillator example. And the little white box is a model of an inductor. Now, in the golden schematic, as it's called, you actually can link the schematic and the layout. And you'll notice the inductor has a white box around it on the right, which then corresponds to the schematic white box of the model of the inductor. The white box on the right in layout, uh, you can pick an EM simulator to actually simulate that automatically. And one of those choices is Axiom. Uh, thus, Axiom is integrated into Virtuoso. The ports are automatically added. Um, and you see the uh, white box again, the boundary of the simulation, the ports would be added automatically where the nets cross the boundary, which is typically what the designer would want. Once the simulation is complete, the S parameters are brought back into the schematic and you re-simulate. So pretty much automatic, integrated uh, axiom. Now, uh, in that integration, there are a number of nice features. Uh, first of all, you can completely control Axiom from within Virtuoso. I'm not showing you any of those menus. 
but you can control the port type, in particular the grounding type of the port, the mesh settings, number of CPU cores used, frequency sweep, etc. Now there are a number of visualization options, uh, including meshing, and of course seeing the ports. Uh, here you see the mesh of our inductor, um, and the designer then could decide if that mesh uh, looks reasonable uh, as they design and use Axiom. Let me quickly show you the results of this uh, voltage-controlled oscillator in this graph. Uh, the red curve is the model, so these would be standard uh, spectra models. The blue curve, we have included parasitic extraction of the nets, and you can see uh, the results have changed. Uh, the horizontal axis here is the resonant frequency of the voltage-controlled oscillator. The vertical axis is basically the voltage controlling it. And as the voltage changes, of course, the resonant frequency changes, as we would expect. The green curve is uh, where we have actually taken the axiom results and used those, the S-parameter results. And you can see uh, it changes the oscillator frequency quite a bit. Uh, conclusion is it's important to have an EM simulation S-parameters for the inductor. Uh, inductors on silicon chips are a notorious example where you want to run EM simulation. It quite frankly is the dominant use of, EM, of a full EM simulator like Axiom in silicon. Okay, V15 just released about a month ago again. Uh, we have made a number of improvements to Axiom for silicon chips and actually all chips. So also the 3.5 chips many of you use, gallium nitride, gallium arsenide, where normally you would be designing within the microwave office environment for those. First of all, um, we now support uh, very small vertical features much better uh, in two ways. The Green's functions, which is the underlying math behind Axiom, support very thin letter, uh, layers better. Uh, we support sub-nanometer resolution now before we actually always round it to a nanometer. Uh, where this comes into play quite a bit is in the vias and silicon, and especially in the thin layers for MIM, metal insulator, metal capacitors, which are so popular. And so we can do uh, model those much better, simulate those much better than before. The other thing we've improved quite a bit is meshing, always working on meshing. Any numerical EM method is only as good as its mesh. And we've uh, reduced the mesh count. We continue to work on a better conditioned mesh, meaning we get fewer HARFs. A HARF is a high aspect ratio facet. And uh, think of a sliver, a needle, a long skinny triangle. Those are bad for the matrix. And you want equilateral triangles, and you want, and you want squares. You don't want long skinny rectangles. So we continue to work on that. Uh, we have a better uh, meshing algorithm. Uh, it can uh, lead to more efficient meshing and then therefore we can do larger problems. Okay, let's talk about the other world, which is uh, boards and uh, packages. It, at Cadence, our tool is of course for that layout is uh, Allegro. And how do we get Axiom to work with Allegro? The way we do it right now is uh, Allegro has IPC 2581 layout. And what you would do is the parts of the layout that you need to run in Axiom, you would export from Allegro using that format and bring it into the microwave office environment and go ahead and simulate. Uh, we also support ODB++, an, uh, another lang layout language, very similar to IPC 2581. So if you are using another layout tool besides Allegro, uh, you can get it in that way. Finally, as a side note, new in V15, we also now support Gerber import. And uh, Gerber is the board layout language that's been used forever. Many of our customers have always wanted us to be able to import Gerber. We always could outport, output 
Gerber, so you could send it to your board shop. Uh, but now you can import it directly. And so if you are a Gerber person, we're now supporting that in 15. Back to uh, Allegro, back to IPC 2581. To get this to work, to bring the layout into Microwave Office, the way the integration works is you use two wizards in Microwave Office. You see them circled on your right. The PCB import wizard does just that. It brings in the layout from Allegro. It is aware of the various nets, the various layers that will be used in Axiom. Uh, you can do an area select, etc. so quite a bit of control. Once it's in Microwave Office, you would go ahead and use the PCB EM setup wizard to bring the layout you brought in into Axiom. Uh, features there would be uh, ports are automatically added using something called pin ports. Okay, so here's a quick picture of it. Um, uh, the big picture you see right here, this is actually Allegro. And that is a uh, handset board, uh, 28 gigahertz, quite complicated. And that is brought into Microwave Office. What the designer is interested here is actually this portion at the lower left, which is an antenna. It's an eight patch antenna array on the board. Um, they went ahead and brought the whole board into Microwave Office and then using the PCB, uh, excuse me, the EM tool, EM setup tool, they brought further brought the antenna array into Axiom and simulated it. Uh, I'm going to go actually ahead and go into the software and show you how that works because uh, I think it shows a little bit nicer than slides. And let's go ahead and do that. Welcome to the world of Microwave Office. Uh, this is the new release V15. And what I'm showing you here is the layout that was brought in from Allegro on that uh, mobile phone board and uh, how the import works. So what the designer did is they went over here to the left to Wizards PCB import. They opened that up. Uh, they, of course, selected the IPC 2581 file and they went ahead and imported the layout. Now, when they do that, they, if you come over here to the left and we look at this um, schematic that was created, uh, this is the stack up that Axiom will be using in a minute. And the actual layout is the schematic layout, and it looks like this. So quite a complicated board, a uh, number of layers, I think four. And um, we're very interested in this antenna array, which is right here. So what is done next is if you go back to the layout that was brought in, Another wizard is used, and the wiz that wizard is this guy on the left, PCB EM import. And I go ahead and bring that up. And what I can do is I'm going to tell Microwave Office select certain shapes. Uh, I could select that pin if I wanted. Then with say a uh, then with a uh, smart select, notice that it would actually finish selecting the net. Once you selected the pin, you see it went all the way down uh, to the antenna. Uh, various stuff here, of course, you can see what nets you're using, etc. Once the nets are selected, uh, then typically you would use an area select around those. I won't bother going through those details. Let me instead uh, show you the final layout that you would get into Axiom, and here it is. They have selected the eight antenna elements associated in that scenario around it. Now, notice that eight ports have been added automatically. Those are called pin ports. The designer uh, does not need to manually add those. 
the, so the import tool is smart enough to do that. Uh, they are making a ground decision for you. So you might want to check on that to make sure you have the ground. Ground is always an issue in ports. Have to make sure it's right. I won't go into those details, but, but that is something you should be checking. Uh, finally, it's always nice to see a mesh. And let me show you one uh, quickly here. And there is a 3D view of the finished Axiom simulation. It's mesh. And you can see that we get a nice uh, typical kind of mesh. If I spin the board, you can see the patch antennas uh, at the bottom. One of the results of the simulation uh, is uh, antenna patterns. Uh, they look pretty. And of course, designers want to see them to see how well their antenna is doing. Uh, this slide actually shows you that uh, these are the individual patch antenna patterns. You also, of course, can do one of the entire array being simulated. And on the right, you see a two, typical 2D plot uh, of this type of patch. Once the antenna patterns have been created, uh, and here in this slide we see more details of those patterns, uh, what typically would happen is the uh, S-parameter file that results uh, would be driven in various ways using something called in-situ simulation. Outside of our scope of our talk today as we're talking about just the EM simulation of the S-parameters and the associated antenna patterns. So in conclusion, uh, Axiom continues to be improved. Now that we're part of Cadence, uh, we're working hard on integration uh, with uh, Virtuoso RF at the chip level for silicon chip designers and with the Allegro platform for the board and package designers. So stay tuned for uh, future developments on that. We continue to improve the integration. Also in V15, the new release version of the software of and including Axiom, of course. Feature improvements, better meshing, always better meshing. Uh, it's what a lot of the cycle spent by our R&D Axiom team spends their time on is meshing. I hadn't mentioned it yet. Another thing we've included in Axiom is a true DC solver, which is extremely fast. It's essentially just getting uh, if you will, the resistance of the various nets. The reason we do this is um, for harmonic balance simulation or Spectre RF, you need a DC simulation so you can properly bias the circuit. And now we can do it uh, extremely quickly uh, and more accurately. With that, I will conclude. Uh, thank you for listening, everybody. If you have Further questions, uh, please feel free to get in touch with us.